And we are back once again here on Yankees Hot Stove. New York sports lost one of its iconic writers over the weekend when Phil Pepe passed away at the age of 80. Bill, he was a close friend and mentor of yours. He started covering the Yankees in the 60s, you in the 70s. What were your first impressions of him? Well, um, you know, it's funny. I, when when uh, I got the word last night that Phil had passed away, the first thing I could think about was the fact that um, uh, a couple weeks ago I was at a funeral with Bill Parcells of Mickey Corcoran, who was Bill's mentor, high school coach. And after we came out of the funeral, uh, out of the church, Bill turned to me and he said, you know, Billy, he says, between my father and my brother and now Mickey, I'm running out of people who helped put me together. And I thought about that because... Uh, in Phil's case, I, in my case, I was very fortunate that uh, in growing up in the business, I worked with Milton Richmond at UPI and then Dick Young at the Daily News, two of the legendary sports writers. And then when I came to, the, was given the Yankee beat at the Daily News, Phil had been my successor and he literally taught me the ropes of how to cover the Yankees. And that's what I'm thinking about today. I, Bob, I'm running out of people who helped put me together. Yeah. How, would, how was he such an influence early on? I mean, maybe the first day you show up on the beat. Well, uh, interestingly, uh, the first thing he did was he took me around the clubhouse and introduced me to all the players. Now, you've got to remember, this was the Bronx Zoo days. Yeah. In it. And um, uh, that was so important because and basically he let all the players know, Munson and Therm uh, uh, Nettles and Goose and Reggie, whatever, this is my guy. Uh, so when, you know, he comes around, be good to him or whatever, you know. Yeah. And, you know, and they, he was, Phil was really beloved by all the by all the players they really because they trusted him and rightfully so and so um, the other thing he said to me was if there's one thing you need to know Billy uh, with this team you never have to worry about your early stories the Yankees will always provide and by that he meant was you walked into that clubhouse <laughs> and it didn't matter what day of the week it was either Thurman or Nettles or Sparky Lyle, or Goose, or Willie Randolph, or whoever. Somebody had a beef that day, either with George or with something about doing with the ball club, right. the manager, or with Billy Martin, whatever. And uh, Reggie would stick his foot out and trip you. You couldn't get by his locker. And so, I, you know, I, I, I never forgot that. I said, Phil, you were so right. I never had to worry about my early story because there was always somebody willing to provide it for me. I'll bet you had a lot of those. You're never going to guess what happened to me today or who said something to me. Right. When, when you think about Phil Pepe, ultimately, what do you, everybody kind of has their own thing and what they're terrific at. What do you think he was the best at? Well, he was no question. He was the greatest, best on the, on the job, uh, under the gun, baseball lead writer. In other words, he wrote the lead stories for the, on the Yankees and uh, World Series and everything. I never saw anybody better under the gun. Now, you got, you got to understand, Bob, in those days, you know, you had World Series games starting at 8.30 at night, mm -hmm. Eastern, Eastern time. They would end at close to 1 o'clock in the morning, and the, and the guy writing the lead had to deliver an 800-word story in like 20 minutes. And Phil was just unbelievable. He didn't need quotes or anything else. You got his lead story the next day in the paper, and it was all there. And I never saw anything like that. And so when I took over the Yankee beat in 81, and they made it to the World Series, ordinarily, as the Yankee beat writer, I would have been writing the leads at the World Series. And the assistant sports editor who made out the schedules, he came to me and he said, Billy, uh, I know you're accustomed to writing the leads. But uh, if you don't mind, uh, we're going to have Pepe write the World Series leads. And I, he said, I hope I'm not hurting your feelings. And I said, no, as a matter of fact, I'm breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> <laughs> you let him come under right. the gun and write those yeah, headlines. Yeah, <laughs> well, there was nobody better. And he'd, yeah. he'd been doing it since 1961. So, I mean, who am I to say, no, wait a minute, I'm the beat writer now. I'm going to do this. Bill, some great memories. Thank you. Now, with the passing of Phil Pepe, a link to a golden age of sports is gone. For nearly six decades, Pepe covered the New York scene in a variety of ways, entertaining, informing, and influencing generations of fans. He began covering the Yankees, as Bill mentioned, during their historic championship season of 1961, which featured the iconic home run race between Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris. During his professional career, Pepe spent time with CBS Radio and also contributed to YesNetwork.com. Numerous writers have been showing their appreciation for Pepe, including another one of our hot stove colleagues, Mark Feinsand, who called Pepe the heartbeat of the New York chapter of the Baseball Writers Association of America. Pepe served as the chapter's chairman in 1975 and 76. And he was also its executive director 
for the past 21 years. His surviving family members include a daughter, Jane, and three sons, David, Jim, and John. Again, Phil Pepe was 80.